Welcome to a deep dive into uh, ancient Rome. Well, not gladiators and chariots this time. We're going a little deeper looking at Marcus Aurelius. You've sent some fascinating stuff about his life, his philosophy. It's a chance to really, you know, unravel a complex guy. I mean, most people probably know him from pop culture, like, you know, the movie Gladiator. Right. Which, let's just say, take some liberties with the truth. Okay, so how does Gladiator get Marcus Aurelius wrong? Well, for starters, remember how Commodus takes over? Yeah, not exactly a filial piety award winner. Exactly. Uh, but in reality, Marcus Aurelius made Commodus co-emperor, and he ruled for years after Aurelius died. Apparently, Aurelius wanted someone else entirely to be his successor. It kind of shows that history is rarely as simple as a uh, Hollywood script. Yeah. Absolutely. So before the throne, who was Marcus Aurelius? Mm -hmm. What we've seen about him says he was almost raised for the role. Yeah, he was practically groomed for it. Born 121 CE, powerful family, politics was just part of life from day one. Sounds like a pressure cooker. Totally. But here's where it gets interesting. As a teenager, he becomes obsessed with cynic philosophy. We're talking like rough clothes, ditching the luxury, sleeping on the floor. Wow. Teenage rebellion, emperor style. What did the cynics even believe? Sounds intense. It was all about rejecting what they considered artificial. Wealth, status, even basic comforts. Virtue to them was the only true good. Imagine a philosophy that basically said, screw the system. No wonder his family was a bit concerned. Mm. So here's this future emperor drawn to a philosophy that practically rejects his entire world. How did that even play out? Did he become some kind of philosopher rebel? Well, his mother definitely stepped in, tried to steer him back toward, you know, the path everyone expected. Right, duty calls and all that. Exactly, but that interest in philosophy never really left him. And this is where Stoicism comes into play, which really shaped his reign. Remember those meditations you mentioned? Yeah, they seem pretty crucial to understanding this guy. They're pure Stoicism. In those writings, we see Aurelius' personal reflections on virtue, reason, duty, the core of Stoic thought. And it's fascinating to see how he applied those principles, not just as a man, but as an emperor, right? So we've got this image of Marcus Aurelius, philosopher emperor, all about Stoicism, but his reign, wasn't it full of wars and conflict? Doesn't really sound like inner peace to me. That's the thing, right? The paradox. This is a guy who valued reason, self-control, finding peace within, but he ruled during some seriously turbulent times, you know? Yeah, the stuff you said mentioned constant threats from Germanic tribes, a devastating plague, even a rebellion led by one of his closest generals. Exactly, it was non-stop. That's a lot to handle for anyone, let alone someone trying to actually live by these demanding philosophical principles. Totally, and that's what makes the meditations so interesting, I think. They weren't just like some PR stuff. Right, not just for public consumption. Exactly. They were his private thoughts, almost like a philosophical journal where he grapples with self-doubt, the burdens of leadership, even death. It's incredibly human, you know? Yeah, it's like a window into the mind of an emperor, but also just a guy trying to, like, figure things out. You mentioned stoicism was key to how he dealt with all this. 100%. Stoicism's big on focusing on what you can control your own thoughts, your actions, and accepting what you can't. Which makes a lot of sense when you think about being emperor, right? Yeah. So much was outside his control. Exactly. And you highlighted one passage where he writes, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Seems like he really took that to heart, especially when things were chaotic. So did he ever have to compromise his principles? I mean, was there ever a choice between the philosopher and the ruler? It's tough to say for sure, of course, but we know he was active in those conflicts, led his armies in battle when he had to. Right, so it wasn't just talk. No, not at all. He understood action was sometimes necessary. The sources paint him as someone who valued peace, absolutely, but also understood the need to defend Rome, defend his people. Which kind of adds another layer to that philosopher king idea, doesn't it? The one that goes all the way back to Plato. Exactly. Plato imagined a ruler who was both wise and just. Someone who used power for good, not for themselves. And Marcus Aurelius seems to have taken that ideal seriously. So he wasn't just reading about philosophy, he was trying to live it. Even on the battlefield. It seems that way. And it makes you wonder, how could someone from ancient Rome be so ahead of his time? It's true. That idea of leading with both strength and compassion, it's something we still talk about today. Absolutely, and I think that's what's so enduring about Aurelius. He wasn't perfect, nobody is, but he strived for something more than just conquering or ruling. 
He wanted to be a good man, a good leader, and those qualities, they last. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Mm. Leadership isn't about having all the answers or, you know, ruling with an iron fist. Right. It's more about trying to do what's right. Even when it's tough. Even when it means questioning your own beliefs. Right, yeah, and facing those internal struggles head on. You highlighted that part where Aurelia says, the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Powerful image, right? Yeah. He understood that being a good leader, it starts with self-mastery, understanding your own weaknesses. Yeah. And that's what I think is so compelling about him. He wasn't afraid to show those struggles, the doubts, the human side of trying to lead a good life, let alone an empire. Totally. And I think that's why people still connect with his words, you know, all these centuries later. For sure. He reminds us that we all have these internal battles, right? Anxieties, challenges trying to live up to what we believe. It's like he's giving us a guidebook for being human. Mm -hmm. Even with all that chaos of ancient Rome swirling around him. Totally. And those challenges, they haven't really changed that much, have they? Nope. We still deal with uncertainty, fear, the temptation to just abandon our principles when things get tough. It's all still there. So if listeners take away one thing from this deep dive into Marcus Aurelius, what would you want it to be? Hmm, that's a good question. I think it's that philosophy, it's not just something in a book, you know, it can be a way to actually live, to lead, to deal with the world and ourselves. Makes you want to dust off those meditations, right? <laughs> well, this has been amazing. Thanks for uh, taking us on this journey with Marcus Aurelius, it's been really eye-opening. My pleasure. And hey, remember, trying to find wisdom, it's a journey, not a destination. Sometimes the best insights come from looking back and realizing how much we have in common with people from, well, from a totally different Marcus Aurelius, he ruled with grace Stoic wisdom all up in his face Oh yeah Kept his cool through the Roman storm With a calm that was fire, man was born to reform He said, mind your kingdom, so take the throne In a peace, that's where seeds are sown when life's heavy, don't be rattled Keep your crew steady, never be battled Marcus, Marcus Stoic and kind, he knew the rhythm Kept it locked in tight Yeah, Marcus, Marcus Philosophize in the funk of life He's wise in disguise Oh yeah, in the heart of Rome he kept through wars and trials, he'd never fold No way With thoughts like gold and soul so deep A funky emperor in wisdom he'd steep Like to dance, he often say Step by step, don't give it away uh -huh. When chaos comes, take it in stride Morals climbing streets his wisdom spread stoic vibes in every word he said oh yeah keep your inner peace don't let it stray marcus grew the ancient rolling away Turning nothing into something. Let me give you that formula while I'm on it here. Turning nothing into something. How do you do that? How do you turn nothing into something? Here's how you start. There's three steps to it. Number one, imagination. And try to imagine yourself in those new, worthwhile, unique positions. So imagination starts to change everything. Now imagination is not tangible, but it is almost real almost real. It's not real, but it's almost real. But it's hard to say that imagination is nothing. 
but it's nothing in terms of tangible. It's not, it's not tangible yet. And you always have to say yet. Imagination is not tangible yet, but it is the beginning of turning nothing into something. It's the beginning of turning nothing into reality. Imagination. Imagination is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. Imagination is real in the sense that it affects. It'll affect your behavior. It'll affect your enthusiasm. It'll affect your emotions. It's real in that sense, but it's not real in the tangible sense. Next is faith. To believe that what you imagine is possible. How would we start to strengthen our belief in that what we imagine is possible to turn it into reality? And there's two or three ways. One is to believe your own testimony. If you've done it before, why couldn't you do it again? If you've done it once, couldn't you do it the second time? Why not believe in your own testimonial? If I did it before, I can do it again. And that's what's important about personal development. You can lose the money, but not the skill. So who cares about the money? A friend to all is a friend to none. Inwardly, everything should be different, but our outward face should conform with the crowd. The ultimate goal of life is to achieve self-realization and unity with the divine. Bhagavad Gita Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. There was never a bad peace or a good war. The foundation stones for a balanced success are honesty, character, integrity, faith, love, and loyalty. Zig Ziglar Is this then a thing of that worth, that for it my soul should suffer? and become worse than it was, as either basely dejected, or disordinately affected, or confounded within itself, or terrified. What can there be that thou shouldest so much esteem? As to what you can do, you watch successful people and do what they do. Invest in you. Learn something that can help you to begin to make the adjustment to the changes that's taken place in the economy. We, we have conveniences now that we've never had before. You can order food to your house. Organic. Why? Because that's what time it is. When I was a kid, you got an elevator, there's a person there that asked, what floor please? And then technology came and it eliminated that person. We're going through something that's always been with us. Creative destruction. Something that was created to take over a certain position and it destroyed what was there. That's been going on for a long time. That didn't just happen. They have technology to teach people how to speak. Yes, I want to see that artificial intelligence tell you their story and, and touch your heart and tell you the things that they've gone through and the setbacks they've had and what it means to be hungry and how they got fired from the job. You want to position yourself that what you bring is unique. What you bring is indispensable. Technology don't have a heart. Bet on you. Invest in you. Majority of people are not going to make it. Reverend Ike was right. The best thing to do for the poor is not to be one of them. Most people, because they're lazy, because they're uh, not willing to learn, they're hoping that the government will save them because of fear, because of doubt, they're stuck. And many of them are waiting on God. And God is waiting on them. There's a difference. No one owes you anything. You have to work for what you want in life. You'll never find a rainbow if you're looking down.
The time is always right to do what is right. Martin Luther King Jr. Excuses make today easier, but tomorrow harder. Discipline makes today hard, but tomorrow easier. What we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. If you can't get a miracle, become one. Nick Vujicic. When you do something from a clear judgment that it ought to be done, never try to avoid being seen doing it, even if you expect most people to disapprove. If, however, it would not be right to do it, avoid the deed itself. But if it is right, why be afraid of anyone who wrongly disapproves? One, two, three! One, two, three! I am great! Listen to me, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am phenomenal, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am going to do great things, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am. I was created to be great. I was created to do great things. I was created to have great things, and I will no longer ask others for their permission. That Eric Thomas that grew up in Detroit and had like that Detroit mentality, while I love it, it doesn't transfer to every community. I had to let, let the dream destroy you. Let it strip you. Let it remake and mold you. Don't be afraid. Some of you are afraid. Listen to me. Wherever you from, if that's where you from, if you leave, you can always come back. I promise you. I promise you when you come back, you can get right back in the conversation. Ain't nothing going to change. I promise you, whatever world you're from, if you go to other worlds, you can always go back to that world. The, the version of you that you are right now, is a blessing, but it won't take you to the next level. What got you here won't take you there. So let the dream destroy you, tear you down, redefine you, build you back up, make you stronger. The first version of Eric Thomas, the high school dropout, that guy would have never been able to stand here and help you. I had to destroy that Eric Thomas. No matter who you are, if you're average or if you're good, when you get around greatness and you stay around greatness, you start listening to great podcasts and reading great books and you start hanging around great people and you start becoming a part of great masterminds. God, you, you just evolve. And I don't know what happened, but every year I went from a high school dropout and homeless to I started to becoming every single day more of who I am. And I can't believe it. Catch a good mood. It so rarely visits us. You don't have to win every argument. Agree to disagree. The less you desire, the more you love. Chinese proverb. Better days are coming. You won't always wake up in the morning with a heavy heart. There is no other land. There is no other life but this. Be a lifelong student. The more you learn, the more you earn, and the more self-confidence you will have. Brian Tracy When you make use of divination, 